Canada area to the go up to Edmonton, go go up to Edmonton and go about four miles west to come to Jasper Park Lodge, and, and that's where we took them. In fact, I took my children. We took our children there when they were when they were uh, teenagers. And now my grandchildren are teenagers. We take them there, and uh, so that was our trip. And, and, and what we do on our trips is every night we have a dinner time of which from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock is just family. And during that time we have great discussion what we did that day, what we learned that day. But I usually have a, a, a teaching moment with the, with the grandchildren. So this time when they came to their uh, place and sat down in our, in our room at the table, there was a rubber band on the place. And so I had them pick up the rubber band, and I asked them, you know, what, what, this rubber band as it is right now, what can you do with it? And, and they all looked at the rubber band, and they realized that without being stressed, the rubber band is worthless. The only value of a rubber band is, is for it to be stretched. You, you put it around some pencils, you hold pencils together. If, if, if the rubber band isn't stretched, it has no purpose at all. And so I shared with the grandchildren that, that that's the way it is with us. That we have a purpose and we're to stretch and grow and get out of our comfort zone and, and to, to grow into that purpose. And it was, a, it was a wonderful time. In fact, what we did is, is when I finished that, I, I, took, took the, I took, told her to take the rubber band and put it around their wrist. And the next day when they were out having a good time, just enjoying life. I just wanted to see the rubber band and be reminded that the only value of that rubber band is, is to be stretched. Now, my, my Ella, who at that time was 11 years old, she, she caught me the next evening right before dinner and said, Papa, she said, you know the rubber band? And she had it on her wrist and she said, I have two rubber bands on my wrist. Well, I said, Ella, that's great, but where did you put your other rubber band? She said, Papa, when I went outside this morning, I looked on the ground, and the first thing I saw was a rubber band. And she said, I thought to myself, the story my Papa told me last night really was for me. And I picked up that rubber band, and I put two of them, and I just reminded myself, I need to stretch myself. And she said, I need to help someone else get stretched, too. <laughs> I thought to myself, Ella's 11 and she's already got it figured out. I know people 41 who still haven't figured it out. You see, that's what we're to be. We're, we're to get out of our comfort zone and then we're to help other people get out of their comfort zone. In fact, what's really beautiful is what I teach people is this. I'm going to help you get out of your comfort zone. And I'm very comfortable helping you get out of your comfort zone because I'm comfortable getting out of my comfort zone, because I've always been out of my comfort zone, because that's the only zone you can grow in is your uncomfortable zone. You don't grow in your comfortable zone. You don't grow if you remain as you are. If you let that rubber band sit there on the table, that rubber band has no purpose, it has no usefulness, it has no work. It has to be stretched, it has to, it has to move out of what it naturally is to something that is unnatural, something that is different. But it is the movement out of that comfort zone that makes a difference. In fact, I, I've got this in my notes, so I'm just going to read it to you quickly because I like it. The comfort zone is characterized by doing the same things, the same ways, with the same people at the same time and getting the same results. And then asking the same question, why? That's the comfort zone. If I always do what I've always done, I'll always get what I've always got. And I know a whole bunch of people, they just run in that circle. And remember I said in the last session that average people want you to be average. Average people don't, they don't want you to stretch. They don't want you to, to grow. I have, a, I have a wonderful friend that lives on the Eastern Seaboard and, one evening I was with him, and in fact we were at this house, we were enjoying some great lobster and crabs, and, and, and he said, well, you know, I went, out and, I went out and got them today, and he said, let me tell you something about, interesting about crabs. He said, you get a basket, and you go out and you find a crab, and you put it in the basket. 
He said, if you only have one crab in there, you've got to have a lid because the crab will crawl out. But he said, if you have two crabs, you don't need a lid. As soon as I get my second crab, I don't need a lid on there. Because he said, if one crab starts to crawl out of the basket, the other crab will reach up with the claw and pull it back down. He said, crabs don't let crabs crawl out the basket. I said, golly, I know a bunch of people like that. Come on, how many of you know some crab people? Come on, talk to them. Man, I love what Steve said. It's a, you know, steal your dream back from the people who stole it from you. Get it back. You know, don't, don't, don't let those people, don't, don't get in the basket with a bunch of crabs. They're not going to want you to get stretched. They're, they're, not going to, they're not going to want you to get beyond yourself. And I, read, I love these people who say, you know what, John? I'm looking forward to the time when I'm so successful that, you know, that I just, everything I have just kind of runs itself. Now, I don't know who you're talking to, but nothing runs itself. If it's running itself, be sure it's going downhill. Nothing climbs uphill on its own. Nothing succeeds if it's going up. You've got to have somebody working it, touching it, pushing it, challenging it. And that's the way the rubber band is. The rubber band just says, you, you, you and I, we get to be stressed. We, we've got to be, we have to be challenged. So, what should be my stretch area? What should be your stretch area? If I need to be stretched, what area do I need to be stretched in? Number one, your, uh, your giftedness, your, your, your natural ability. You need to be stretched in what I call <clears throat> your strengths. Your strengths are your gifts and your natural ability. And what you want to do is you want to stretch in those areas. Because when you are stretched in your strengths, you get challenged. Now, when you're stretched in your weaknesses, you get intimidated. So you don't stretch in your weak areas. You stretch in your strong areas. Every one of you have some gifts. Every one of you have strengths. Every one of you have natural abilities. Two, three, maybe four of them. I don't know how many. I have a couple. But whatever your strengths are, that's what you want to develop. Because that's what sets you apart from others. That's what puts you above average. That's what, that's what allows you to be successful in life. And the reason that you want to be stretched in your strengths is because you can go higher than if you're stretched in your weaknesses. Let me illustrate that. From a one to a ten, let's say you're you're weak in a skill and you're like a, you're below average, you're a three. Well, if you stretch in that weak area, you could become a four, maybe you could become a five. But guess what? After all that stretching, you're just average. You're five out of 10. You, you don't want to be there. People don't pay for average. You, you don't want to be there. But let's say you stretch in a strength area. Let's say that you're a, a seven. You're already naturally gifted. You have a skill set that's above average. So if you're a seven, that's what you want to stretch in. That's what you want to work on. Because you can go from a seven to an eight to a nine. And let me say something. When you get to nine, you're in the top 10%. And when you're in the top 10%, life is very good. I tell people constantly, your goal is to get in the top 10%. That's where the fruit is. That's where the influence is. That's where the, where the success is. That's where the money is. It's in the top 10%. And the only way that you can get in the top 10% is to start with your strengths. Start with your sixes. Start with your sevens. And, and, and work your way up. You, 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 can't, you can't go from a three to a ten. It's not possible. Not in skills. Basically, people can only stretch two numbers. So you got to get something you're good at, and you begin to stretch it in, in your strengths. And, in your, and when you're stretching your strengths, you, you, you gain confidence because you already know you're good. Just like if you're stretching your weaknesses, you become intimidated. So if somebody comes and says, John, I want you to speak to 100,000 people, there's no problem. I've spoken to 100,000 people before. It's no big deal. I, I, I'll go there. It's my strength area. 
If they tell me that they want me to be on Dancing with the Stars, I've got problems. <laughs> you with me? I'll be glad to speak to people. It's a strength. Dancing, it's a weakness. Now, the point is very simple. You've got to ask yourself, what am I good at? What am I already naturally gifted in? What's my natural talent and ability? Because whatever it is, that's where you want to stretch. The second area that you want to stretch is in what I call important choices. Now, when I talk about important choices, I'm talking about things, choices that make a difference in your life. Choices such as attitude, discipline, friendships, priorities. Now these aren't skills, these are choices. And if you make these choices the right choices, you're going to do very well. And what's amazing about choices is, unlike skills, in skills you can only stretch about two numbers in that rubber band, but in choices you can, you can stretch ten numbers. You could literally have a bad attitude, a one, and, and decide to make a change in that attitude, and within a month or two, you could have a 10. You, you, could, you could stretch further, and you can stretch faster in choices than you can abilities. So what you need to do is you need to sit down and, and list the choices that are important to your life. The values, those things. List them out. And then ask yourself, am I stretching in those areas? Because if you stretch in your choices, and if you stretch in your strengths, I want to promise you this, you'll be very successful. I guarantee it. The law of the rubber band says, the moment you stretch in your strengths and you stretch in your choices, everything begins to get better. So I have a, a couple of stretch questions I just want to ask you to kind of get your mind going before I bring Fred up. The first stretch question you have to ask yourself is, who stretches me? Ask yourself, who is it around me that makes me bigger, that makes me better? You see, what I learned a long time ago is this. If you get around bigger people than you, they'll make you feel bigger and you'll become bigger. If you get around smaller people than you, they'll reduce you, they'll dumb you down, they'll make you feel smaller. Remember, they're the crabs in the basket that you don't want to see. So the next time you get around a person that reduces you, just put a crab on their head. And every time they come closest, oh, here comes Mr. Crab. Oh my God, here comes Mr. Crab. Oh yeah. And you know very well, you don't want to be around them. They're, they're going to reduce you. They're going to, they're going to make you smaller than you are. And, and, and what you want to do is you want to, get, you want to get around people that are stretching you. So when you get around people that stretch you, put a rubber band on their head. So, oh my gosh, here comes a rubber band. They're going to stretch me. My God, it's getting better. Oh, oh, there's a crab. Watch out. So the question is, who stretches you? You've got to have somebody in your life that's bigger than you, better than you. Remember when I talked about the law of environment? I talked about, I talked about, don't be at the head of the class. Don't be number one. Don't be, there's got to be somebody ahead of you. Why? Because if somebody's not ahead of you, you'll stop stretching. The moment that you're at the head of the class, instead of growing, you start trying to teach other people how to grow. And you stop. I watch people stop growing themselves to try to grow others. And the best way to grow others is just to keep growing yourself. So who stretches me? And the second thing you ask yourself is, is what stretches me? What, what in my life stretches me? Is there a, a, a book that stretches me? Is there an event that stretches me? Is there an experience that stretches me? Is there an idea that stretches me? I mean, what is stretching me in my life? Because what I learned is everyone has something to teach me. So that if I have a teachable spirit, I can listen to them. I can ask questions. I can learn from them. They can stretch me. And what I've learned is everything has something to teach me. I shared with you that I just came from Charlotte where I was with about 120, 130 executives. 
in an event called Exchange. I do it every year. We do it in a different city. We'll do it in Beverly Hills next year. We did it in Dallas last year. Did it in Charlotte this year. And what we do is we give people stretchy experiences. And because we were in Charlotte, we had them do a teamwork exercise. We put them in teams of six. And, and because Charlotte is known for NASCAR and racing, we literally had the Hendrick Motor people come in and, and, and teach our people how to change a tire like they would in a pit stop. And I'm telling you, it was for two and a half hours, I watched this incredible, stretching, hands-on experience. It was, it was phenomenal. And, and, and when they started, he said, I want you to, first of all, sit at a table in your team and think how you're going to change that tire. So they, they kind of thought, what would be the best way to change that tire? Then he put them over by the tire, and he, but they put stopwatches on it. He said, okay, change the tire. And so they changed the tire. It took them quite a while, but they changed the tire. So then he said, now I want you to come back, and I want you now to, 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 to realize that when you just think about something without continually practicing it, you're limited. So now I said, I'm going to give you five minutes to practice changing that tire. So, so now go back and you've got five minutes. You can take that tire on and off as many times as you can, but you've got five minutes to practice. After they practiced, they got better and they cut the time down. Then he said, I want you to come back and I want you to get around the table again and I want you to ask yourself one question. After we thought about it and after we practiced it, what was the thing that kept us from doing it faster? What was your bottleneck? And I mean, they're around these tables and they're talking, and then they go back out and they change the tire the third time. And every one of them, they just literally reduce their time from 35 seconds, maybe down to 15 seconds. I mean, cut it in half. Why? Because they were doing something that was stretching them. They were practicing, they were thinking, they were planning, they were talking, they were collaborating. And, and what I want you to know is that that every person needs a stretching experience. Because here's what I know. Once your mind has been stretched, it won't return back to its original dimension. And once your heart has been stretched, it cannot return back to like it was. And once your ideas are stretched, you'll never go back to a small idea. And once your hope has been stretched, you can't ever go back. You see, the reason that you stretch is because once you go out there, here's what I tell my people. I, I have a coaching company and we take our coaches to different countries and by the invitation of the president of those countries and, and we teach round tables and we do transformation projects. And when I had my last group of quote coaches in Paraguay, and they were about to spend four days training people, equipping people, and, and we're ready to go out there and do it. I looked at them and I said, you're leaving success, which is all about me, and you're going to significance, which is all about others. And then I said to them, once you have tasted significance, success will never satisfy again. Wow. And that's a fact. Once you've been stretched, once you've added value to others, I was talking backstage with Tara after she got that speaking, and, and she was talking about, because I've mentored her for some time, she's talking about the stretching experience, and, and she said, John, she said, to be honest with you, I just want to add value to people. I just want to add value to people. Once you've tasted significant, you'll never step, settle back for success. And that's the law of the rubber band. Let, let your life be stretched. Go out, go out there. Get stretched as much as you can. You'll never, ever again settle to be a rubber band on a table. You'll always want to have a purpose. And Fred Graves, who has been so good to us, allowing us to come in and add value to you through the laws of growth, Fred's going to come in and he's going to talk about this law of the rubber band. In fact, backstage, Fred told me, this is my favorite law. So let's give Fred a big hand as he comes out and teaches us about the law. Thank you.